The Implications of Other Power Shenran thoroughly rejected even the subtlest traces of self-power in Nembutsu practice, thus not only presenting a full resolution of the problem of one's calling and many calling, he also brings Honen's Nembutsu teaching to its culmination. The practice of the Nembutsu, in both its aspects of trust and of utterance, become the working of the primal vow. Quote, With regard to practice or to Shinjin, there is nothing whatever that has not been fulfilled through Omida Tathagata's directing of virtue to beings out of his pure vow mind. Close quote. Since true utterance of the name is the working of Amida, emerging from the person in whom the Buddha's mind has been awakened as Shinjin, the realization of Shinjin became the focal point of Shinran's teaching. According to Shinran, Shinjin is not an attitude one must assume toward Amida in order to achieve birth. It thoroughly transcends the duality normally implied in the ideas of faith and practice, for it is the Buddha's mind reaching into man's foolish mind and completely becoming one with it. The concept of Shinjin and its religious implications are clearly expressed in his notes on one's calling and many calling, particularly in Shinran's interpretation of the passage on the fulfillment of the eighteenth vow from the larger sutra. Traditionally, this sutra passage had been understood to mean that when people say the name once, with sincere faith in Amida's vow, their birth in the pure land, where they will enter the stage of non-retrogression and advance to Buddhahood without backsliding, is ensured. Although the word nen ordinarily indicates either an instant in time or a thought or state of mind, in the pure land tradition after Shantau, it was interpreted as the utterance of Amida's name when it referred to the Nembutsu. Shenran, however, reverts to the literal meaning of Nen here, interpreting this passage as teaching the nature of Shinjin, quote, Sentient beings, as they hear the name, realize even one thought moment of Shinjin and joy, which is a meet of sincere mind giving itself to them and aspiring to be born in that land. They then attain birth and dwell in the stage of non-retrogression, close quote. Shinran stresses that the practicer attains the stage of non-retrogression not in the pure land, but here and now, immediately upon realizing Shinjin. For Shinjin is Amida's sincere mind giving itself to him. In Mahayana Buddhism generally, the non-retrogressive stage is attained by bodhisattvas when, after long practice, they see suchness for the first time beyond any discrimination between subject and object, becoming one with Dharma body. Even though they have realized Dharma body, however, since he or she has not yet sundered all the blind passions harbored in the subconscious depth, they remain bodhisattvas and must undergo further training. Although in traditional Pure Land thought, persons reach non-retrogression in the ideal environment of the Pure Land, for Shinran, they attain it the moment they realize Shinjin. This is because in Shinjin, the mind of the foolish being and the mind of Amida, the Dharma body as compassionate means that arises from Dharma body as suchness, become one as Amida wakens the being to great compassion. This awakening is ultimate and final, since it is the manifestation of true compassion in a person. It is a kind of enlightenment, necessarily leading to the attainment of supreme enlightenment, and Shinran calls the person of Shinjin the equal of the Tathagatas, for he or she has, without question, broken the bonds of samsaric life. Quote, no that since the compassionate light of the Buddha of unhindered light always illuminates and protects the person who has realized Shinjin, the darkness of ignorance has already cleared, and the long night of birth and death has already turned to dawn. Shinran's explanation of Shinjin 
as being decisively settled and as being one with the stage of non-retrogression because it arises from the working of other power differs radically from the thought of Honen and Saikaku, although they also speak of saying the name with mind decisively settled and believing that everything is decisively settled in one utterance. For here there is still room to accumulate more and more merit, so that merit increases more and more, and the cause for birth becomes even more determined. For Shinran, since the non-retrogressive state is realized here and now, there is no need to ensure or to anticipate the culmination of religious life in the future. This does not mean that the person need not look to the future for the final attainment of Buddhahood, Buddhahood, however, comes about necessarily and effortlessly, by itself and for itself, naturally, and there is no conscious willing or effort required. Moreover, when one is touched by the working of other power, having entered the ocean of Amida's vow, the Nambutsu appears spontaneously. Diligence and determination in Nambutsu practice are unnecessary as expressed in the Tani Sho quote, If Shinjin has become settled, birth will be brought about by Amida's design, so there must be no calculating on our part. Even when we are evil, if we revere the power of the vow all the more deeply, gentle-heartedness and forbearance will surely arise in us through its spontaneous working. With everything we do, as far as birth is concerned, we should constantly and fervently call to mind Amida's immense benevolence without any thought of being wise. Then the Nembutsu will indeed emerge. Close quote. What of the person in whom Shinjin is not yet settled, and for whom the Nembutsu will not arise spontaneously? Shinran states in a letter, quote, Those who feel uncertain of birth should say the Nembutsu aspiring first for their own birth. Those who feel that their own birth is completely settled should, mindful of the Buddha's benevolence, hold the Nembutsu in their hearts and say it to respond in gratitude to that benevolence, with the wish, May there be peace in the world, and may the Buddha's teaching spread. Here, Shinran differentiates between people unsure of birth in the Pure Land and those whose birth is settled. The latter utter the Nembutsu as an expression of gratitude to the Buddha and as prayer for universal peace and happiness, and the former as a sincere wish not so much for birth into the pure land as for complete entrusting of themselves to Amida Buddha. Chapter 9 